You'll never believe this, but upcoming AMD CPUs and GPUs will have Intel inside? But before I get to that, Intel is getting very confident about their next-gen parts, AMD sneaking out new tech, and the ultimate fix for Nvidia's 16-pin connector issues. Welcome everyone to GamerMelt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, Intel is looking very confident in their next generation CPUs. So much so that they're apparently planning to offer a full new lineup of processors starting with their next generation Panther Lake. And that's not too surprising if the leaks about Nova Lake end up being true. Don't forget that it's their next-gen desktop parts, and we've been seeing rumors claiming as much as 52 core parts, meaning a consumer desktop part with a whopping 52 cores. The next couple years are set to be very interesting, especially with the story I have at the end of this video. Either way, don't forget that Panther Lake is set to be Intel's next-generation mobile chips built on their 18A process node, and Nova Lake is the follow-up that includes includes desktop parts. Regardless, today's story comes from the very well-known leaker HXL on Twitter, where he claims that Intel is planning to launch their usual Core and Core Ultra chips, but then a new lineup of Core Ultra X parts. And a former IT home editor gave us an example of the new name, with the Core Ultra X7 358H. And that H designation obviously means that these are mobile parts. But as far as what the X means exactly and what it tells us, I'm not sure. It almost seems to be trying to piggyback off of Snapdragon or maybe just AMD's use of X and processors. But one thing's for certain, product names are getting wild. Now, following up on that, AMD is already at work on their next generation Fluid Motion Frames. For those who don't remember, Fluid Motion Frames is AMD's driver-based frame generation that works in just about every game. And this new updated tech, which we're already getting pieces of, but I'll get to that in a second, was recently spotted in the latest Radeon drivers. And as you can see, according to a new report from Guru3D forum user, this person, References to AFMF3 or FrameGen V3 have appeared, suggesting AMD is preparing to update its driver level frame generation feature. So all of this seems to align with their FSR Redstone release, which proves that this will likely be an even bigger deal than what a lot of people originally thought. But AMD has already released a bit of an update to current AFMF tech, where, as you can see, it says on September 23rd, AMD released the AMD software PyTorch on Windows Preview Edition, this, which most gamers on the regular WHQL or beta trunks skipped. Those that did grab the driver and started poking around in the AMD software application discovered a feature not found in the gamer-focused regular releases, fast motion response. And as you can see right down here, it's right here in the driver, fast motion response, and you have two options, repeat frame and blended frame. And as it states, in repeat frame mode, there's a brute interpolation of the output by simply repeating the previous frame. But in blended frame mode, the GPU blends reconstructed frames to the output, which looks fluid in low to mid-level action scenes, but it could cause blur or ghosting in fast action scenes. Basically, this is a new update that obviously kind of lets you pick how you see frame generation. And I definitely think that this is something that's much needed, but I'm definitely Definitely more excited for AFMF3. Next up for today, it looks like we may finally have the fix for Nvidia's 16 pin connector issues. Now, given how much money people have to spend on these cards, you'd think there shouldn't be anything to fix. But alas, multiple RTX 50 cards have already melted since their release. And one of the big reasons people think this happens is the fact that none of Nvidia's 40 or 50 series cards have load balancing circuitry. Interestingly enough, even though the 3090 Ti has a 16 pin connector, there aren't any reported cases of it melting, and those cards have load balancing, so it definitely adds up. Well, the German liquid cooling specialist Aqua Computer just announced a new product called Ampanel, which brings something to the table that no other melting connector solution has so far. On a side note, how sad is it that multiple companies have been forced to develop a solution to fix a problem with your $3,000 GPU? Either way, this new Ampanel adds 
active current balancing to the card. As it states here, Ampanel features a six channel load balancer that utilizes a microcontroller to continuously monitor the six 12 volt power lines inside the 16 pin power connector and regulate their current flow in real time. Upon detecting that the current in any power line exceeds 7.5 amps, which is the rated current per contact, Ampanel intervenes to redistribute the load to prevent overheating that could potentially provoke a meltdown of the power connector. Basically, it does exactly what it sounds like. Unfortunately, this solution is not cheap. It's expected to come in at around $93, but to ensure your multi-thousand dollar investment is safe, it might be worth it. But that's actually where the issue lies. We don't know the load balancing is the de facto problem. Seems to be, but it's not a guarantee without NVIDIA coming out to say so. According to NVIDIA so far, it's user error. Yet for some reason, they redesigned the connector for the 50 series. Obviously, it didn't completely fix everything, but maybe, just maybe, this is the solution. And lastly for today, future AMD chips are going to be made by Intel? You heard that right. Longtime rivals could soon be joining forces. And what's wild is that this would actually be a huge win for Intel, not necessarily AMD. Talk about an underdog story. For much of the 2010s, Intel dominated the industry, so much so that they were starting to look like a monopoly. AMD simply couldn't compete. When the company launched their first-gen Ryzen products, they were on the verge of bankruptcy, so their success was essential. Luckily, they did just that, and I don't think anyone could have ever guessed how far they'd come. I remember when Ryzen was first announced, Intel was in complete shock. They were scrambling to get new products out with the hopes of actually competing, but they had sat on their success for far too long, thinking that AMD would never catch up. Fast forward to 2025 and Intel is in shambles. Even the United States government had to step in and buy a huge stake in the company, hoping to keep at least some chip manufacturing in the US. What was once mocked as a glued together processor had completely undone the once great company. This finally brings us to the story. According to a new report from Semaphore and later by Tom's Hardware, Intel is in early talks with AMD about making their chips with Intel's foundry, meaning Intel could soon be making Radeon GPUs or maybe even Ryzen CPUs. And what's wild is that back in early 2024, Intel's now defunct CEO, Pat Gelsinger, said that he hoped that they could one day build chips for AMD. But at the time, it was just a fun thought that no one really believed what happened. Yet here we are. And it makes perfect sense. Intel's foundry business is in the process of becoming a subsidiary of Intel, so they could work more independently. But AMD would obviously have to be given extra assurances that none of their design would be stolen or anything like that. Unfortunately, we don't know how much of AMD's manufacturing could move to Intel, but if even a small portion of it does, this would be a huge win for their new foundry. So while that does it for today, are you shocked that Intel could soon be making chips for AMD? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.